Oh man, to less than 24 hours to go before a critical macroeconomic piece of data is revealed, which could affect the crypto market and whether we rally for the next month or so. And that is the CPI reading. We get the May release of CPI tomorrow. And as you can see, markets are relatively flat now in anticipation for this critical reading tomorrow. We've got Bitcoin slightly flat here, sitting at just above 30,000. And we saw intraday here. We tried to have a run up to about 30 and a half, and we just gave it back up and said, no, thank you, when the wider markets open. And the wider markets, if we take a quick look, we can see Dow Jones down 0.5, 0.56 on the SP, and 0.53 on the NASDAQ because we're all waiting for this key, key, key inflation data. Now, exactly like we said, guys, when we started off this week on Sunday, I said to course members, I said to you guys on videos that do expect a very volatile week. Expect rallies in the early part of week and then expect the markets to give it back up in anticipation for this reading. Don't be surprised now if you get a sell-off or you get slight eu euphoria leading up to the reading. They can, that's just, again, traders playing games on the lead up to the reading. But just be careful if you're not a trader, if you're not an experienced trader, then try not to trade these events when they come up. If you are an experienced trader, by all means, check out the link to the description. Get yourself set up on Bybit. You guys can win up to $4,000 in bonuses over there. And it's a great platform for you to do your short-term trading with a small, small bit of your portfolio. But for the rest of us, let's just stay focused here. And as you can see, it's been a volatile week. We did get exactly what I predicted, a big run up all the way up to 31 and a half, got re rejected all the way back down, had another run back up, rejected back down. And then we've been channeling with a small amount of volatility, not huge moves here uh, over the last kind of 36 hours or so. And now we're just waiting for this key piece of data to come out. And what are we expecting? What is the market looking for? We're going to break that down right now. And the first thing is this. This is the CPI reading, which we're going to get tomorrow. And the important thing is, last month's reading was sitting at 6.2. Let me just change this over to a column chart. It was 6.2. We need to see this inflect down a little bit more. We want to see 6, 5.9, something like that. If it's higher, market could get spooked and could start to fall quite dramatically because that means Jerome Powell may need to come out and be more aggressive with rates, okay? Remember, we've had 0.25% increase. We then had a 0.5% increase. We need to see inflation respond to that and come down. If it responds, the market could see a rally because what that will then mean is Jerome Powell's in control. When he increases interest rates, inflation is coming down, the market is listening to him, and that's what we want to see. Now, remember, what do we have priced in? The majority of people are expecting a, a double rate hike. So 93% of the market is expecting a double rate hike at the next FOMC meeting. Now, the next FOMC meeting comes on uh, next week, June the 14th and 15th. So this is important. This is the last piece of, piece of data that Jerome Powell will get uh, before that meeting. So this CPI data is really critical. And you can see the market are really hanging their hats on that and waiting for it. We also have for the next meeting on July the 27th, we pretty much have the majority of the market here pricing in another double rate hike as well. So we need to keep an eye on what happens. Remember, if these double rate hikes are not having an impact, if it's not bringing inflation in check, then the fears of a triple rate hike, right? Something like 0.75%, which was rejected by Jerome Powell in the last meeting, could come back on the table. That could change if inflation is not coming down. So that's really, really important. Now, longer term, what are we looking at here? Well, what are the levels we need to worry about? Well, you guys might think I'm a bit of a stock record, but it's just because we're stuck in this channel that the levels are the exact same. The levels to the downside continue to remain this blue line at 28,600 level. As long as we hold that, we can stay in this channel, of course. If we break this line, we need to look to the bottom of the wedge and bring into play targets such as 26,300, which is this pivot point three. Okay, that's what we're looking out for here. Now, if we can break to the upside of 31 again, just like we did uh, three times now, we've got to get through these yellow lines. We've got to clear ourselves above 31,800. Your next level of resistance is at 32,600, this yellow line, and then we mean business, okay? Then we can really start uh, heading back higher and recovering this big drop. Remember this steep drop here? We fell so quickly and so powerfully from 37 down to 30 that we're hoping once we clear 32, we should be able to make that up quite powerfully and quite quickly as well. So we need to make sure we're prepared for that run to the upside. 
equally, and this is the crazy thing, we have to be prepared for something to the downside to 26. You don't want to get to the position where Bitcoin starts falling towards 26 or 25 and you don't have any cash to take advantage of that because these are the dips that come very quickly and they go very quickly and we need to be prepared for that. It's really important that we can capitalize on that and take that opportunity. So you can see all the altcoins have pretty much fallen back into sync today. You've got Bitcoin slightly up 0.2%, Phantom running up 1%. We can take a look at the Phantom chart as well to give you an idea what's going on. We're still breaking down from this pattern, right? The good news on Phantom is it's holding this kind of 33 level, though we did just recently touch 32. So technically we are still falling, but ever so gradually to our next price target, which is at 30 cents from pivot point number two over here. So we need to continue to monitor that. We need Bitcoin to start heading up so Phantom can recover 38 cents. Otherwise it's 30 cents and then even 24 cents at the bottom of the wedge for Phantom. So we need to keep an eye out on that. Other coins, we can see we can see ADA getting a little bit of a cooling off after a strong day yesterday and a nice strong uptrend here on its hourly chart. We saw Coty moving uh, similarly to the upside as well in uh, in collaboration with that as well. We know those two projects are tied together. And overall, just a fairly flat market today, right? As expected. If you've not watched my video explaining yesterday how Phantom got snubbed, how Cardano was rocketing and what the warning message is for avalanche holders make sure you go watch that. that's a really really important video for you guys to go watch and understand what is happening okay i'm going to be flying out to consensus in austin texas hopefully tomorrow so hopefully i can give you guys some content from there let me know in the comments what type of things you would like to see and i'll give you some coverage from there hopefully we can catch up with a few of the phantom team as well and bring you some content uh but otherwise if i don't see you before then uh don't forget to smash up the like button make sure you subscribe go watch that video from yesterday and the last message I want to leave you with is this. In this down market, and we've been in a down market for a long period, right? Look at Fear and Greed Index, 11 again. I mean, let's put this into perspective here. When have we last been at these lows for so long? We haven't, right? We always end up picking back up past 20. This was, uh, you know, this was stagnant, but above 20. This has been stagnant, but just about above 10. Oh, my head, I just noticed I'm in the way there. Let me just bring that up here. This has been stagnant, but just above 10 here, right? This is really long period now of sustained fear in the market. But what we need to remind ourselves of is this. Over the last 10 years, there was Bitcoin and then there was the others, right? Let's take a look at this. You can see Tesla, which was phenomenal, made many, many millionaires if you invest in Tesla stock, did a 12,000x. Amazon, which did amazing, did a 1,000x, right? Google, 700. S&P as a whole, 200%. We know thank most of that was due to COVID. 1,000% on Microsoft, Apple up 700. But look at Bitcoin. There's nothing like it. And this is why we invest in crypto for the long run. We need to continue to accumulate in our favorite positions, we can't get feared out by the market. We can't let the whales manipulate us. We need to keep educating ourselves, keep reminding ourselves of why we're investing in these projects. Don't get crazy ab uh, absorbed with these meme coins or even low market cap coins, guys. Stay focused. If you're confused in the market, go back to basics. I'm not saying be a Bitcoin maximalist, but go back to the basics. Go get yourself some blue chips, dollar cost average in them and hold, right? Make sure you've got enough conviction in why you hold them and then hold. If you find that all of this stuff is confusing, confusing you with small market cap coins, maybe Phantom's confusing you, Algorand is confusing you, people talking about near protocol, and then they're talking about 4chain and then Avalanche, and you just can't get your head around it. Start with Bitcoin, build your conviction, move on to Ethereum, go get yourself a few other blue chips and keep things moving. That's the key. If you're in this bear market right now in this winter and you're, imagine, you're managing to accumulate, it's going to stand you in good stead. Guys, smash up the like buttons and subscribe. I'm going to head on over tomorrow morning, early hours to Austin, Texas, hopefully, and then you'll see my next video from there. Smash up the like button and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.